welcome back. I'm Rachel from Books and Bobs. Now today um, we came out of our um, warehouse, <laughs> our usual <laughs> warehouse. And we're in a very nice place. Uh, very you gorgeous know, place. Very, yes, yes, very special place because we've got a very special guest with us today, right? And he is the author of uh, two books, right? Um, the Minorities and also this bestseller, <laughs> Harris Bin Porter and the Stone Philosopher. And um, he is Mr. Sufyan Hakim. Hello. Thanks hi. for coming. Thank today. you for having me. This is a beautiful place. Yes. Uh, I am. Uh, this is the first time I'm doing this. So <laughs> <laughs> please excuse me. No pleasure. So um, I have been really excited to meet you. Uh, this is the first time I actually um, uh, actually meet and greet and oh, okay. also I believe I'm excited not, to yes. be here. No problem, <laughs> and uh, yeah. so now this book I've been going through. Um, Harris Bin Porter and uh, it's been making me laugh. And I enjoyed this book, um, even though I have not finished, I have to say no that. Um, but there are so many um, local references, yeah. right? and I think yeah. that is your, uh, that's the point of the book. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. And uh, now I'd like you to uh, maybe explain to, to us, you know, what got you inspired? Uh, we all know Harry <laughs> Potter, yeah. but Harry's been Potter. Where did you get this idea from? Okay, so <laughs> when I first started writing it, um, so I wrote this like 10 years ago, in 2009. Uh, um, I was in, in university, I was bored in a lecture. <laughs> I remember it was media, manage, media management and oh my god, it was, I was bored out of my mind. Uh -huh. So um, this was before the advent of mobile games, or at least I didn't appreciate the mobile games that were out there. Okay. And, and, and so my way back then of like, of, of overcoming my boredom was to just start <laughs> writing stories. Uh -huh. um, and this was coinciding uh, with a time in my life where I started realizing that um, my being a, a Malay Muslim in Singapore mm -hmm. uh, was significant to my, uh, to, it, it, it informed my experience as a Singaporean. Uh -huh. So, um, so that we were exposed to a lot of like Western popular culture yes. and I realized that a lot of those things don't really sit well or, or don't really, um, uh, don't really connect with some of my experiences growing up. Yes. So I started writing parodies just to explore that disconnect. The disconnect between right. uh, between something popular, something uh, between a piece of Western popular culture mm -hmm. and and the values or, or you know the things that, that I was used to um, yes. as a Malay Muslim in Singapore or and in this region. The, the, the contradiction or how they, they conflict each other. Yeah, exactly, right? yeah. Yes. Um, so I started writing parodies. Uh, mm -hmm. I started writing things like Little Red Riding Tudong. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, three Shades of Brown, which is a parody of Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> okay. um, and of course, eventually, uh, I got around to, Harry, to, Harry, to parodying Harry Potter. Wow, um, so this is your third parody, basically. I mean, the, the other two were just writing exercises, mainly. <laughs> okay. Harry's Bin Potter uh, became a viral hit. This was the most successful. Yes. Uh, so I posted, I posted these stories on my blog, mm -hmm. um, and this one went viral. Yes. Like, it got... It, within that month alone, it got like 50,000 shares oh, on wow. Facebook. I don't even know 50,000 people in real life, <laughs> you know, so, so it, was, it was really amazing. That's, yeah, that's big. That's yeah, big. yeah, yeah, it was, it was bigger than I expected. So one of my friends started a self-publishing platform, kind of like a Kickstarter but for books, okay. uh, called Publishizer. And he was like, hey, why don't, you become, why don't you go out and be one of my first campaigns? Wow. So started the campaign, uh, got a lot of internet support, okay. and we met our funding goal of 5,000 USD which allowed me to, to print the first run. Oh, that's yeah, great. so that was back in 2013. I mean, 2009, I started writing it as, a, as just uh, stories for my blog. Mm -hmm. uh, 2013, I started the, the, the Publishizer campaign. Uh -huh. uh, took two years to write. It was my first book, you know. I was so nervous. <laughs> I was unsure as to how to approach it. And I was a perfectionist as well, because it, it was my first baby, right? Yes, yes. So I took two rewrites, um, oh. and then by 2015, I completed it and printed my first run. Oh, yeah. well done. And it sold out. Yeah, it sold out pretty fast. <laughs> um, I, was very, I was surprised. I was, I was pleasantly surprised because, I mean, you know, I was just a boy who was bored in lecture. That's how it all started. <laughs> and then uh, it helped me become a published author, which was one of my biggest dreams growing up. Mm -hmm. so, um, so it's an unconventional path yes. towards <laughs> achieving my dreams, but I mean, as I got to where I am. I'm forever grateful for those moments. But your, your distraction in class 
actually make you Kinda. who you are. That's a right? kid's love home example. I'm a bad role model. Don't listen to the lecture. <laughs> pay attention. <laughs> yeah, pay attention. <laughs> but you know, it all worked well for you and you subsequently um, republished a couple more times, right? Yeah. Before we, we get this final edition. So Yeah, so we had three print runs. Um, uh, my f uh, So after the first print run, I, I, after selling the first track of copies, I was like, okay, this is probably it, right? Like, mm -hmm. that's the end of the journey. You know, people supported the, the, the campaign. Uh -huh. But then, like, there, there were people who, who started asking the major bookstores if they carried mm -hmm. it. And then, so, eventually, the first bookstore to, to approach me was Kinokunia in uh -huh. Singapore. And they were like, you know, uh, right. do you have copies that we can stock? I was like, yeah, yes, please, you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah, as a kid, like, I would go to, that's my hangout spot, you know, I go mm -hmm. to Kinokunia after school, you yeah. know, read books. And for them to approach you, yeah, yeah, they that, can miss out your books. Yes, yes, <laughs> that was like the moment for me. Yeah. Um, and then about around the same time, I, I, start, I met my fiance and she, she helped a lot with, in terms of connecting me to, to the bookstores because she, she, she's in marketing, so she knows the language uh, and she's a lovely yeah. person herself. So I think that kind of helped um, mm -hmm. connect me to the bookstores as well. Yeah. So we started selling on, at localbooks.sg. Um, uh -huh. Eventually, other bookstores picked it up as well. Um, oh, and then great. in 2018, mm -hmm. Epigram approached to like, uh, I mean, Epigram spoke to me about uh, publishing their own edition as well. Yeah, because yeah. this is actually your um, first book. Yeah. And uh, your second book uh, was out earlier this year. Correct. That is uh, The Minorities. Yes. And uh, I'll have a copy of it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, so At this point, we can just cut to the image of Minorities. Yes, <laughs> the image of the book. <laughs> so, um, Epigram actually picked up your second book first, yeah. The Minorities. So and after that was a success. Yeah. They said, can we have the next book, please? Yeah, so the thing is, when, when, I, when, I, start, when I first approached them, I was looking at the like uh, the other Singaporean writers who have been published. Uh -huh. So you have your poets. Uh, I don't know if you, you know names like Cyril Wong and Alfian Saad. Uh, Not very familiar with okay, them. Okay, <laughs> but they're like Singapore Literature Prize winners, and right. and they're they're poets, and mm -hmm. and they tell uh, stories that that many people say capture the Singaporean experience. Uh -huh. So in relation to these writers uh -huh. who capture the depth of of, of uh, whose whose works are emotional and deep uh -huh. one thing to be published for a parody felt like you know like what am i doing compared to these people right yes um but it's still parody it's still it, it's um it's not just joke that, yeah yeah exactly you know so, it's, it's multi-layer and the more i read you know the more i go like i think there's a lot more to just the jokes you know there's yeah. a lot of message behind there's yeah. a lot of uh, meaning behind it uh, can I give a, a non-spoiler summary? Yes. Okay. Please. Okay. So, um, yeah, I agree with you that that there is there are layers to it. Uh, mm -hmm. There is a subtext that I added to the uh, that I had in mind when I started writing it. Mm -hmm. um, so, in this story, Lord Voldemort, <laughs> uh, the analog for Voldemort, of course, uh, wants to take away magic from those he feel are undeserving. <laughs> um, so what, what he does is he created a spell called Chan Mali Chan after the folk song. Uh, that cracked me up when I was <laughs> cracked me up. So he casts it at people and if they know the lyrics to the song, their heads explode. Boom. Yeah. I think there's, a, there's an illustration of a, of a head exploding in there. So, I, the, I, um, so what I wanted to do with that was, so that's his way of like removing people who are of a certain heritage, who know who are familiar with Eastern culture, and, mm -hmm. and that's his way of ensuring that his idea of the supreme culture, uh, you know, can, uh, will be the only one left. Uh, it's like quite similar to like the Holocaust. Kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, come on, Voldemort was always regarded as like magic Hitler, right? Yeah, so, the evil one. Yeah, exactly. So, and, and there's a lot of parallels between Nazism and, and the Death Eaters. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I was trying to capture, but, um, but his particular brand of racism is, of course, against uh, Malay culture. Um, yes. Is he Malay himself? Yeah, yeah. So kind of like how, uh, you know... So he, he is the <laughs> snobbish Malay. Yeah, 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 exactly. Oh. And, and I think, yeah, growing up, in, uh, growing up I've, I've came across a few people who are like that. 
who I think we all we all met a few. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who associate a certain culture with backwardness yes. and and anti-intellectualism yeah. and and all of that. So yes. and I find that sad. So yeah. that was what I wanted to write against. Yeah. Yes, because um, when I when I read to that part and I, it's kind of like light bulbs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, why? Okay, I, I, I get you. You know what I'm talking about? I the appreciate racism. That. And, uh, and it's also very current, even though mm. it was written like 10 years ago, but it is still very current. It's, it's still happening to today. Exactly. And yeah. we can always, you know, name someone you know, <laughs> that is doing things like this. And uh, I think it's, it's a very. Um, uh, it, it really describes our, our local scene. Yeah. I, yeah. I think uh, I think um, things like this is not just locally. Obviously. Yeah, I know it's not just Singapore; it's Malaysia as well, and yeah, yes. other countries have some form of yes. uh, but, discrimination but, like but this. But because you know it is about uh, Malay and Muslim, so we can relate to yeah, it better. Exactly, yeah, exactly. You know, and the hala and not hala. <laughs> <laughs> the hala <laughs> the, the, the which <laughs> and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I I really I have to say that you know um, I, I was surprised. I didn't really expect, uh, you know, so many layers to to the book. To me, um, you know, I know it's a funny book, and I know that it, it, it received a lot of good reviews. Um, but I, as I was reading, you know, I think that um, it's it's not just about jokes. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. all I can say. You know, yeah. you got to read right now. Um, you know what what we meant. Um, yeah. But I think you know many people will get it. Yeah. Because growing up here, we have all seen this. Exactly. Yeah. yeah ex experienced this. Yeah. Right, so yeah. I'm glad you know we've got this written in the book that we can all relate. I'm glad to hear that. So, um, is there um, any challenges when it come to writing this, or it just it just flow out of you? Um, initially, my biggest fear was copyright issues. Uh, yeah, yes. but uh, in Commonwealth law, uh -huh. um, uh, parodies are allowed within the, the Copyright Act, so. Okay. So no issues there. I mean, when I first started, that was what I researched on, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I didn't want to get sued by JK Rowling. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got good lawyers. Yeah, which is why, so at the front, I had to really specify that it's a parody. Uh-huh, yeah. okay. Um, but other than that, I think for the self-published version, the biggest problem was the nakedness you feel as a writer. Because you're bearing your soul to the world, you know? You're, yeah. This is... This, these are my words, yes. read it, and I hope it has some form of like, effect on you. Uh -huh. and, and as a writer, I hope it's positive. Um, so it ca that came with a lot of insecurities. Uh -huh. So I was like, you know, like, I'm writing all these words so people appreciate it, you know. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Would you get a joke? Yeah, exactly. Laugh? Before that, the last person to read my stuff were like my teachers for my essays, you know. And I get the occasionally the occasional D for those. So like, <laughs> okay, no, I'm not, I wasn't a straight A student. So like, <laughs> so, so like, yeah, get, get the, um, wondering if people will read my stuff. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of insecurities with that. Um, and then of course came um, uh, how cutting I wanted it to be. Like I knew. Through, I mean, through my parody, there were a lot of things I wanted to satire. There were a lot of things, there were a lot of social issues I wanted to bring up uh, yes. uh, and, and talk about, right? Um, so, I wasn't sure how, I mean, we, we both live in an Asian society, so we have people who are, uh, who are really fundamentalist and have a very conservative view on certain things. Yes. And we have people who are more liberal, who are, who are open to new ideas. So, um, and, and within my family itself, like there are, I have family members who are at both ends of the spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. So so I had to consider these things well, you know, we had to write. But uh, ultimately, I realized that you, I, I feel that you start your career as an author writing for yourself, mm -hmm. and then you slowly work towards uh, a middle ground where you can write for yourself as well as for an audience of your choosing. Yeah. Uh -huh. So working towards that, that was my. That was my biggest um, challenge. Uh -huh. um, to find that perfect balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think my first, the first few self-published editions weren't really there yet. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I, like I mentioned earlier, I had to do everything. So I didn't, I wasn't really, I didn't have the freedom of mind to yes. to make those creative decisions yet. You, you got to take a step back. Yeah. And look at the whole story. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. I didn't have the time for that because I had to do marketing. I had to do the yeah. you know the social media push. Uh, I had to speak to booksellers. Mm. Uh, I had to try to get the word out. Mm. So you know, and then there were all the inquiries from people who want to buy the book. So I had to do that as well. Um, 
Yeah, so... so yeah, the, that, that cues the, um, what do you call that, the, the, the art side of, exactly. of the whole thing. Exactly, yeah, because yes. I had to do, it had to be, I had to turn on the business part of everything, right? Yes, yes, yeah. the left and the right <laughs> The right brain, brain. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, so my, when my fiancé came along, that was the first, uh, and to help out with certain things, that was the first time I could like, really free up to focus, to, to make those creative decisions. Yes. And then when finally Epigram was like, you know, uh, we'll come, we'll, we'll, we'll fund the printing and all that, you know. Uh, so they gave you very good support. Yeah, the, f tremendous support. So that freed, freed me up to just focus on the creative you can, decisions. You can just the, be, you know, just focus on the art, on the creating process. Exactly, on, the, right? on my craft. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, rather than... Try to juggle many the roles. peripherals. Yeah. yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, I can totally understand that. Yeah, you know. Okay, so it's. Uh, I'm. I'm glad they. They finally. The. Um, all this hard work has come come to fruition, and we've just heard that um, your uh, this current edition has sold out. This yes. print. Yes. This print has sold out. Yeah. And uh, when is the next print? Uh, <laughs> don't take my word for it, but I heard that it's January. Um, whether, I mean, these things can get complicated, you know, um, everything from color proofing to, you know, uh, yeah. if they want to do last minute edits as well. So, um, as of now, it's January. Yes. Uh, but I'm pretty sure we, uh, readers won't have to wait too long to get, okay. to get their hands on the copy. Before they get too angry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, so that happened when I was self publishing it because. <laughs> You know, I mean, like I had, I had to fund printing myself and yeah. everything, and and I had a day job. Yeah. So like the time between my last copy being sold and my f next uh -huh. issue, it might it be, yeah, yeah, it'd be like oh, my a couple of months, yes. you know, yeah. So like, so it's it, there was there was a lot of pressure in that sense. <laughs> so I'm so glad Epigram came along, really. Yeah, it's yeah. always nice to work with like uh, established publishers. Yeah. Like yeah, who have nice. who have an infra infrastructure and network to like you know, take care of everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Okay. Move. Oh, yes. Mm. Now, next question. We'd like to know um, who and what have the biggest influences on you ah. as a writer? Okay. Um, JK Rowling, duh, definitely. <laughs> okay. But my favorite books growing up were the This World series by Terry Pratchett. Uh -huh. Love um, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series by uh, Douglas yes. Adams. Uh -huh. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, so, so that's where my my literary humor developed. Yes, um, and I love everything by Neil Gaiman as well. Oh, so okay. I lean towards fantasy yeah. humor mm -hmm. um, now as an adult. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to read like uh, I'm starting to diversify a bit. So my latest read uh, is uh, Midnight's Children by Salman Rushdie. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. Um, I'm going towards literary. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Um, mm. You know, I'm in my 30s. I think <laughs> it is time. <laughs> it's time I read that kind of stuff. Do you think that um, being a published author now, you feel like, you know, you, 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 you need to read more literary stuff? Uh, yeah. Maybe try to learn from these people, uh, these writers, and perfect your art? and. Yeah, definitely. Um, every good author is a fantastic reader as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think, I mean, there are some authors who refuse to read other the work the works of their peers yeah. because they don't want that to flavor their writing. Uh -huh. um, but I feel like I feel like I'm I'm I come from. It's like <laughs> it's like you know in Star Wars when they say that Rey, like a thousand Jedi live in her. Mm. Similarly, I feel for every author, a thousand authors live in you. Yeah. Um, you are the latest in a in a tradition that goes back to when our ancestors painted on caves yeah. to tell a story. You know, um, yeah. and so I think every story that you read, uh, every work of literary art um, that influences you makes you a better writer. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. So for me, I, as a matter of fact, like for example, like every time I approach a book, mm -hmm. uh, what I'll do is that I'll curate my reading right. uh, by reading books that are thematically similar um, to what I want to write uh -huh. or whose subject matter is similar to what, right. what I want to write. Okay. Um, so it's a form of research as well. Kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, research to get to the right headspace mm -hmm. and also to know that this has been done before. Oh, I right. need to do an original take on, on this, yes. you know? So, 
Yeah, yeah just because reading is like, um, yes, you can read to maybe get uh, try to copy the ideas, but it also helps you to know that you know this has been done. I yeah. can avoid this. Exactly. So we can it could go yeah. either way. Either avoid or build on it. Yeah. I think art begets art. So yeah. um, so I can't. Uh, I mean, I'm not writing from a vacuum. I'm writing from <laughs> from thousands of years of people who have written stuff before. Yes. And then I'm adding to that. Yeah. So it's not like I'm creating something out of nothing. I'm yeah. creating something out of um, yeah. a, a long line, a long tradition of of, of human beings writing stories yeah. by combining letters and words. You know, we, into we all learn all these. You know, in school, all the compulsory readings and all. Yeah. We we are what we read. You exactly. Know, it yeah. All yeah. Part of us. Yeah. And then it's it's how we actually do our own chemistry to to make it our own. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Because every um, mac and cheese would taste different. Yeah. Even though it's contained macaroni and cheese. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you got to find your own. Exactly. Unique yeah. Recipe. So I'm completely yeah. against copying, but I get that you need to build on something that has already existed. Yeah. Yes, I totally agree with you. Okay. So now we also well, we found out what's your favorite um, genre. Is there any specific book? Your favorite book? Um, okay. So weirdly, I attribute my <laughs> um, <laughs> intellectual growth <laughs> to Cosmos by Carl Sagan. It's a science book, so, <laughs> which is very strange. Right? Yeah. So um, yeah, uh, uh, Carl Sagan saw my favorite science writers. Um, he was the Neil deGrasse Tyson before Neil deGrasse Tyson. Because your your field of studies, you, you've learned, you've studied some science and kind yeah. of stuff, right? I mean, okay. So uh, my background is in mass communication, uh -huh. but um, I'm one of those people who disagree that you should only focus on what you study. Uh -huh. You know, like I have, uh, I have friends who are engineers and that's their entire life, right? Yeah. What they read or what they do. Uh, it's um, just that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I don't think life should be experienced one that is, uh, mm -hmm. through a limited number of dimensions. Mm -hmm. Like you need to broaden your horizons as much as you can. Yeah. And so um, uh, a friend of mine got me called uh, Cosmos by Carl Sagan. Mm -hmm. um, and it just opened my mind to the entirety of the world. Carl Sagan was a fantastic writer because he wrote science in a very accessible manner. Okay. Um, so for example, when he, when he talked about uh, the nature of the stars, uh -huh. he would begin with how early humans, uh, how they informed uh, astrology for early humans because they were studying the movement of the stars. Uh -huh. so, so what they did was the foundation for what ast astronomers today did. But it's from a different background because uh -huh. they, early humans believed that it was divine, right? The movement yes. of the stars, uh -huh. that, that, that it it's determined... Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the gods deciding to do these things. Mm -hmm. But then eventually we realized that, um, you know, it's because the Earth is spinning. Um, we don't always have the same... Um, constellation map above us because yeah. you know uh, we are moving to the galaxy. We are moving. Yeah. We are not the center of the universe. Exactly. <laughs> things like evolution, um, uh, things like the idea of the Big Bang uh, theory. Uh -huh. He he explained all of that in in a very accessible manner. So laymen like like me yeah. would be able to understand that. Yeah, and not just that, but he also constructs a, a narrative that. Uh, that allowed me to be interested in these things because I mean it can science can get very dry. <laughs> right, but um, but uh, Carl Sagan did it in a, in a tremendous manner. So, so when I started writing, uh, sorry, when I started reading uh, mm -hmm. Cosmos, I was like, yeah, this is um, not only do I understand the universe around me better, but I realized that there are stories in scientific phenomena that we usually overlook. Yeah, oh, nice. and so that that allowed me to to realize that there are stories in everything mm -hmm. and as an author that that helps me so much yes. you know yes it's um i think i i read somewhere that uh, a good author would see a story in in everything yeah you know um it's, it's, it doesn't have to be like a, a big drama like those uh, hong kong no, yeah. series yeah. you know korean drama it's a small thing. Can it's I just a say, tell a story that, that yes. Carl Sagan wrote about? You guys can edit this, but sorry, just <laughs> allow me to. Okay, so, please. so in Japan, mm -hmm. um, they, um, they, uh, the fishermen will catch crabs. Uh, uh -huh. I forgot what the, what the specific species of crabs are, but they have specific markings on their, on their shells. Uh -huh. So sometimes those markings <clears throat> look like human faces. 
so the fishermen of early Japan realized that, uh, I mean, they created the belief that these were the spirits of their ancestors. Uh, so if they caught the crabs that had markings that looked like faces, they would throw it back into the sea. They don't eat. So they would okay. take the other crabs. Mm -hmm. So what happens as a result is that those crabs evolved to uh, have those markings because yeah. it's only that gene that is allowed to survive. live, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so now every one of them have the marking. Exactly, yeah, and and and, mm. and that allowed that specific species of crab to thrive. Mm. And there's a fantastic story there that you know about survival uh, that I didn't expect yeah. because you know I mean we. And, and that taught me so much about evolution as well. Yes. About about selective evolution because uh, because they chose they they chose to believe that those markings mean that they're spirits. Yes. And that's how that crab uh, species yes. thrives. While and the by others are being they survive better. Than exactly. The rest. Yeah. You know, not not through um, uh, strongest uh, fittest survive. Yeah. You know, I um, the other day I was listening to uh, overheard a podcast that he was listening and about uh, evolution and they say the fittest survive and stuff. It's not always the case. In exactly. fact, in most of the time, the fittest probably die first because you're the more gung ho yeah, yeah, and exactly. you go and then yeah, you yeah, you're the alpha that needs to be removed. But, yes, yeah. but it, it's uh, the others that you know, sometimes it's just all by chance, like this one, the markings, yeah, exactly. or, or because they, they, um, they, they have some um, weird ability to maybe you know curl into a ball better. Yeah, yeah you know, exactly. Or something, it's, it's or, small or things these, like that. These, these, um, um, someone that suddenly got a few spikes <laughs> that yeah. no one else has but <laughs> survived and now everyone else got the spikes. Exactly, yeah. So, yeah, I think it's really interesting. Yeah. You know, if you look at evolution, I, I like stuff yeah. like that Some people well. see randomness, I see a story right there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and then you can create stories <laughs> based on like why this happened, why that. Yeah. Write a story about a crap. <laughs> uh, maybe, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I would love to. <laughs> we can uh, maybe look forward to a story <laughs> of how, you know, uh, some crabs survive <laughs> evolve to be how they are now. That would be interesting. Yes, that would you know. be. So actually, um, talking about um, next books, are you working on your next book now? Okay, so um, I did. Mm -hmm. I submitted it for the uh, Epigram Books Fiction Prize. Uh -huh. uh, it got long listed. Um, they get short listed. Congratulations. But Thank you so mm -hmm. much. Um, uh, and it will be published in October 2020 tentatively. Sometimes I submit my my third, fourth drafts quite late because uh -huh. you know it's the perfectionism. <laughs> perfectionism. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but currently it's slated for October twenty twenty. Uh, uh, okay. It's called Wayang Singer. Wayang Singer. Yeah, Wayang Singer. Okay. It's in English, despite the Malay title. <laughs> um, but it follows the story of two kids in nineteen seventy eight Singapore uh, during the height of Singapore's drug problems. Right. Uh, and what happens is that right at the first page, their dad wakes them up and says, "You know, we gotta go. Hurry. You know, pack up your things. Gotta go." Right. So they they run away. They 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 leave home. Mm -hmm. uh, there are bad people chasing after them the right. whole time, and they eventually end up in Changi Beach, in the north of Singapore, that faces mm -hmm. Johor, and they live with a, with a homeless community there. Okay. Um, so their dad leaves them with this homeless community. Uh, to take care of his issues. Um, so, in this homeless community, they have a storytelling ritual called the Wayang Singer. Um, mm. and so, it's a storytelling ritual before a great bonfire, and this matriarch uh, character would tell them stories. Uh -huh. um, so, these stories will be uh, stories that are familiar to us, but with uh, but sometimes through the through the eyes of the other. For example, um, so okay, so we have I threw in myths, popular stories in there. So things like the Ramayana, um, even P. Ramli stories, oh, the Bujang Lapo, Ramli, Bujang Lapo yes. stories, mm -hmm. um, and all of that get told by this matriarch. And it's, their, it's her way of educating and socializing the kids. Okay. Because in a homeless Through community, you wouldn't have yes. you know, the institution of a school yeah. to do. Yeah. So through the stories, she, she would socialize and she would educate them. Um, uh, so Things like biblical stories as well, but we but I'm taking a different look at it. So, for example, um, the story of the Tower of Babel, when when God gave humans uh, our different tongues and cultures, right? Yes. I wrote about the chaos that came immediately after that, when okay. when one human being couldn't speak to the other because they're now speaking completely different languages and yes. they can't communicate, right? Uh -huh. So the chaos after that. Um, 
And then of course, there, um, I look at the Ramayana through the eyes of Ravana, um, just so, just because um, as a, as homeless people, mm -hmm. they would be the ones, you know, um, that society mistreats and kicks around and, and you yeah. know, uh, sees as other. So, so this is her way of saying, you know, we are uh, people as well, feelings. Mm -hmm. Similarly, Ravana is, yes. uh, as much as, as he's a demon, he's had a family and he knew love. Yes. Uh, so to be defeated by, by Rama, you mm -hmm. know, that, that would still be, he, there, there would be people who are worse off because of that, mm -hmm. you know. So I wanted, uh, so, so every chapter breaks into a short story in which she tells. Right. In which she so tells it's the all story. the stories that she's telling. Uh, yeah. Right. So there's a main narrative arc where uh -huh. you know it's the kids trying to survive this new environment, right. trying to figure out what's happening to their dad. But every chapter breaks into a, a, uh, into a story. So there's a every uh, short stories to every chapter yeah. as well. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, okay. That's already sound very interesting. Really? Okay. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> I like uh, stories like this. Okay. You know, okay. And uh, especially with a bit of myth and uh, you yeah. know history yeah. thrown in. This good the, So this my first, I'm telling my first four books to be my where I come from stories. Uh -huh. So these are my. These are stories set in Singapore, or like the books that I love, mm -hmm. uh, and my uh, and how I respond to them, uh, okay. and then hopefully beyond that will be uh, I'm hoping to eventually because cross break to the international market and you know hopefully yes. get published uh, get published in the UK or US and we'll yeah. see how it goes from oh, there. Already published in the UK, right? Well, yes, yes, yes definitely, <laughs> definitely. Um, but yeah, well, I mean uh, that's it's a nice step up. Yes. I'm looking at my next steps as well. Wow. Yeah. We wish you all the best. Thank you that. so much. I'm, I'm actually it. looking forward to that, uh, to all the stories and to, to see it, uh, you know, from a different lens. I, yeah. I like stories like that. I'm glad. Know, not, not always just the, the, the main, uh, you know, just one-sided. Mm. I, I believe that there's always uh, another story. I exactly. mean, even Hitler, Hitler would have his own stories. Definitely. How he become the person he is. Yes. You know, stuff like that. Yes. So I like stories like that. So we look forward to, to your next book. Yes. <laughs> October 2020, fingers crossed. Yes. If you want to talk about it, I'll be back here as well, so oh, we can yes, talk about please, more. Please sure, do. of course, okay. definitely, We've, definitely. Yeah, you guys are sure. there. Yep, yep, I'll be here. We've got evidence now. Right here. <laughs> and a lot of witnesses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, um, we come to the part where um, we like to invite you to read us. Uh, your favorite passages, what, sure. a passage or passage, okay. passages. Okay. So please. So I don't know if you. Oh, you haven't gotten there yet. Have you gotten there? Uh, have you gotten to sorting song code? No. Oh, okay. But don't eh? worry. I love okay. Uh, spoilers. Okay. So <laughs> so in Harry Potter, mm -hmm. you have the sorting hat, right? Yes. Yeah. So in this parody, what you have instead is the sorting song code. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> during orientation, when the first years come in for the first day of school. Uh, they'll have to go to the Great Hall and mm -hmm. put on a sorting songko, mm -hmm. which will tell them which house they belong in. <laughs> yes. Similar, just uh, just and as the songko on the cover, right? Yes, correct. <laughs> yes. So just as um, Harry Potter has four houses: Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, mm -hmm. and Slytherin. I'm a Gryffindor. Um, the um, Hogwarts Halal Watt School of Witchcraft and Wizardry has four schools as well, mm -hmm. and they are named for Singaporean personalities. Okay. okay, so I'll do this reading and then I explain the Singaporean personalities that yes. I'm in after. Okay. Yeah. So this is from. Um, hang on. This is from chapter eight, the Sorting Song Code. There's an illustration. <laughs> uh, okay, oh, just sidetrack about the illustration for a while. Yes, please. So this is done by the brilliant Muhammad Izdi, who's a Singaporean artist uh -huh. um, that Epigram uh, found. I mean, I, I never met him before this. Oh, okay. So he's represented, represented Singapore for the Venetian Binali and like, well, the street art Binali. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so I was very like, impressed with his work uh -huh. and like, um, yeah, so they linked me up with him and we're like, yeah, he's, go ahead, man. So every chapter opens with an illustration by him. Did you like sit down with him and walk through yeah, what yeah, yeah. you liked? And we discussed like, because there'll be mind. scenes across the chapters, right? Mm -hmm. So we have very nice constructive, amazing creative meeting where we sat oh. down and we're like, okay, what scenes do you think should we bring out? Uh -huh. And he's like, you know, and then he picked out. It should look like this or maybe this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way. Let's bring out this scene. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a bit boring. Let's do this one instead. Uh -huh. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and I live for these moments, you know. Um, like I love the journey of creative minds, yes. you know. So, so really enjoyed it. Mama is the 
Amazing guy. That's great. Okay, so this is from page 99, chapter 8, mm -hmm. uh, in which the sorting Sonko sings his song. So you know how the sorting hat has a song, right, in Harry Potter? <laughs> like, to introduce the school year and all that. Uh -huh. So similarly, the sorting Sonko has a song, okay? Okay. Uh, some parts might not be for kids. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, you might not think I'm Jambu. But do not judge me on what you see. Besides, I'm just a freaking Sonko. How Jambu can I be? I am not some random ethnic head here. You should know this from the start. For I am the sorting Sonko of Hok Ta Hal Wat. So try me on and I will tell you where you ought to be. In one of four houses named for the founders of this academy. You might belong in Fundy if you possess charm and will. When it comes to void deck soccer, they rule with unerring skill. Perhaps get it down with Heikel, where they are really cool. These groovy kids in blues are the best musicians in school. <laughs> or yet Halima House, where the clever get it on. Here, the term smart mud is not an oxymoron. Last and least is Trump, where they really value gold. I will be honest, if you go there, you're likely an asshole. <laughs> so put me on, little one. Do not be afraid. I promise I will not swallow when you give me head. <laughs> not for kids! <laughs> Sorry, that's it. I'm not paying attention. <laughs> right. Yeah, so there's a So the four houses. So the four houses are named for four Singaporean personalities. Mm -hmm. There's Fandi Ahmad, who's our greatest footballer of all time. Uh -huh. um, there is Halima, named after Halima Yaakov, our president. Mm -hmm. So that's where the smart people go to the Riven Claw equivalent. Uh, okay. um, and then there's Heikel House, named after Sheikh Heikel, who's a rapper in Singapore. Right. So the musicians go there. The, the groove. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then Trump. <laughs> right, yeah. so, so in, the, in the first editions, it was Bush House. Oh, yeah, okay. and then yeah, and then since I, I managed to edit, it, yeah. everyone wanted me to edit it a bit. Yeah, so, so I updated to that. yeah to to the, the current orange in the White House. Yeah, I think Trump is better than Bush. As a <laughs> <laughs> as, as a as a as a the evil effect, house again. Yes, yeah, for yes. the effect, yeah, I agree, especially I agree. now that he has been impeached. <laughs> Right, okay, thank you very much. I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, no problem. So, no problem. now, um, I know those were the questions I sent you. Okay. But I also have some uh, emergency questions or uh, hidden questions I did not send, send them you. away. Okay, no problem. <laughs> but these are all just fun questions. So okay, okay, no problem. I'd like to ask you that. Now, um, imagine if you are stranded on a remote island. Okay. Right, you're far away, you've got no access, can't go anywhere, and okay. you, are, you, you will have a book with you. Yeah. Uh, so that means you're likely to have that book with you for the rest of your life. Uh-huh. And which book would you choose? I've got three choices. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> or okay. Twilight. Okay. <laughs> or a Japanese food cookbook. Uh, <laughs> one of three. Which one would you? In this island, have? can I get the ingredients to the Japanese cookbook? Well, maybe yes. Okay. If you're in an island, so <laughs> if you can catch a fish. You can uh, you can eat. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, oh man. I used to think about this because, so in Singapore, you serve national service. I mean, you have to do it here as well, right? Yeah. So. They now. Sorry. Oh, they, they stop. stop okay. Um, so yeah, so we had to learn jungle survival skills. Mm -hmm. and, so you can hunt. And while I was doing that training, I, I was so desperate for a book, any book. <laughs> and that moment, at that time was when Twilight first came out, when I was serving national service. So, so in that moment, read. I was like, I, I remember thinking, even if I had Twilight, I would be so happy already. <laughs> you know? Because all I read were like, you know, military manuals and like... <laughs> they were the how to tie a knot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, how to dig trenches, you know? Ugh, um, uh, hmm. So did you eventually read Twilight? No, I never, I never touched it in my life. <laughs> for good reason. Um, no, so the next time, so we could book out of camp of that, right? So when I booked back in, I brought my Terry Pratchett books. Oh, uh, that okay, was like Camille so. Life. But between those three, I would say the Japanese cookbook. <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey uh, is nice and sexy and everything, but like, uh, I think after a while, I don't want... Because, okay, I imagine being being stranded like that, mm -hmm. the characters in the books become your friends. 
because that's the only <laughs> oh, human yes. interaction you, you have, right? Like Wilson. It's what they, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, like Wilson, yeah. like mm-hmm. uh, in Castaway, right? Yes. Um, so, t- whatever these people say will be my only human interaction <laughs> oh, no. for however long I'm stuck there. And I don't think I want to be stuck on an island with these people, you know? Yeah, with Christian Grey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Christian Grey. <laughs> Uh, is, 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 both of them Anastasia, have yeah. Like, yeah, just very deep state issues that I feel I don't want to be straddled with. Yes. Um, <laughs> Twilight might be a bit more fun. Uh, mm. I mean, as much as the movies, you know, uh, put Kristen Stewart in there and, uh, and you know, and that whole situation yeah. with Edward and Jacob, um, I, I think it'd be a bit more fun. <laughs> um, but I, I'll do a pass as well because... Yeah. Uh, so I think I will stick to a Japanese cookbook that will probably help me survive better. Uh, yes, practically. I'm an choice. author, so I'll probably like, end up writing my own stories. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah. and those okay, will be the good. those will be the characters in my head. Yes. As I'm stranded there. You create the the characters, the yeah, friends yeah. that you so want. So at least yeah, I get to choose. You know, yeah, exactly. Like, yes. Yeah. So at least you can like create another uh, Harry Spin Potter, and yeah. that would be your or something. Best yeah. Best friend for life. Writing a story seriously is basically just creating people that live that will live in your head. Yeah. Uh, Harry's been Potter lives in my head sometimes, and the okay, it's, it's been with you for the last ten years, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. You, every every couple of years, you have to revisit. And yeah, yeah, exactly. Publish it again. Yeah. So, so, so he does live in my head, and there are situations where I'm like, well, I, I'm I'm in a, I'm somewhere, and I think, what would Harry's been Potter do? You know, so so they they do become real people in my head. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's good. So I'm never lonely. Pra- so to practical speak. choice. Yeah. You know, at least you can uh, uh, s- s- learn how to make your your food uh, better. Exactly. Rather yeah. Than eating, eating the fish raw. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, uh, the following question is um, yay or nay. Okay. No right or wrong answers. Okay. Just your personal preference. All right. Now, um, dog ear. Books. Uh, yes, I do it. A lot of people, uh, oh man, uh, but I love the, I love the fact that a book is worn and used mm-hmm. and, and, and seasoned, you know? Mm-hmm. I, love, I love it. So I'll take my books everywhere. Oh. And as a result, I don't always have a bookmark. Mm-hmm. Thank you for the bookmarks, by the way. Oh, you're so this might help. <laughs> I don't have a bookmark and, and I bring them everywhere. Mm-hmm. So like to the bathroom, you know. Uh, <laughs> so like, so I need... And then after I'm reading them, I need to do something else, right? Mm-hmm. So the fastest way to quench, to know where I, I stop reading oh, is to no. know. A, a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, violently um, disagree with me. Uh, yes, some uh, people for this, call but people that do that demons, <laughs> evil. I guess I'm a demon. <laughs> um, I used to do that. But okay. uh, not anymore because now I've got uh, you know, a lot of bookmarks with right. me. Okay. Yeah, so. yeah, so maybe those bookmarks may help. Yeah. Yes, let Thank me you. know when you run out. Okay. You know, the thing with bookmarks is that it always gets misplaced. Yeah, they yeah always that's get right. Exactly, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> dog yet, really heavily dog yet. Okay, now next one. Scribbling. Writing inside your book. As in... Inside, yeah, your name. Uh, yeah write, writing a book, yes. I mean, uh, any books that you read. Do you write? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh. I mean, not in my books, but in other books as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so, mean, not, not just this, but it's like any books that you're reading. Yeah. yeah. So, like I told you, right, um, I, when I'm writing, I'm reading as well, you know. Uh, so there are times when, when the line just, when I respond a particular way to a line. Mm-hmm. So... You just have to take it out and... Yeah, yeah. And then I just, you know, because... The thing about, uh, here's a, ha- a job hazard of being a writer, right? <laughs> so you read both for pleasure and mm-hmm. academically mm-hmm. because you start breaking down sentences, mm-hmm. you know, um, and, and I would do that as well. So sometimes I would like, you know, okay, this is, this is fantastic, like, you know, uh, or like, uh, or like, I think a certain character that I have in mind for a book will speak a certain way. So okay. like circle it and like circle. you know yeah and your own note yeah okay so you might not no, don't borrow my books it's yeah like it's it's just it's hell well, in it'd, there it'd be, it'd be nice actually it'd be um, dog eared and think, scribble um, many of us um, you know many readers probably don't like to dog ear their own books and write in their own books yeah but when we get a copy of a dog ear or especially a book that has been that has some scribbling inside yeah. I think I'll be curious to write uh, to read 
Oh, okay. What the previous owner has written. Ah, yeah, okay, like, okay. Oh, look into your brains. Oh, this is, you know, what you were thinking when you're reading this. But I think it's, in, it's interesting. Okay, okay. You know, I don't necessarily do that myself, but I think it, it's a good way to okay. actually have a peek into someone else's brain. Oh, okay. You know, thought process, at least. I guess, right? okay. Okay, so you do dog ear, scribbling. Yeah. Oh, my God, mm -hmm. I'm like feeling this test. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, no. Um, E-book, e-reader, e book e no. No, I like the the physical tactile nature of a book. Do you own one? No. 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 I mean, I own an iPad, I guess, no. but <laughs> I don't. I don't use it for. Okay. I don't use it for not, any reading. Not for reading. Uh, I use it for um, when I when I download uh, uh, like research papers. Okay. But other than that, nah. so that when I use Google Scholar, mm -hmm. download it to my iPad and then I refer to it. Oh, right. Right. Okay. Right. That, that's, so that's, yeah, that's different. but book books, nah, never. Okay. Yeah. I have one, but I don't really use it much. It's my last resort. Oh, yeah. When okay. I go for holiday, I bring. Right. It. Yeah, that makes sense. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Now, fourth one. Okay. Do you lend your book to a friend? Do you lend your book? Uh, mm, to a friend? No, I don't think so. But I mean, as in, my, are you against lending books? Oh, oh, oh. Mm. I'm not against it, but I have books that have disappeared because I lent it to friends. Mm -hmm. I have, oh my god, I have, uh, whoever has it, please return it to me. Um, you. <laughs> I have a fantastic illustrated uh, edition of Howl by Allen Ginsberg. Uh huh. So um, it's, um, it's one of my favorite poems of all time. Uh -huh. and, and so the book I, the book I had uh -huh. was. Um, uh -huh. Uh, is illustrated to uh, in accordance to the story, uh -huh. and the illustration style is just it, it perfectly fits the feel yeah. of, of, of what how was supposed to achieve, uh -huh. you know, post-war drug addled right. intellectuals of America, you know, and and oh, it was perfect, um, mm -hmm. but. It's it's not with me right now, <laughs> and and it doesn't stop you from like oh, I'm not lending no, I mean, to anyone so, anymore. So so right now I mean I'm uh, I'm about to marry my fiance. We're gonna have a house. So mm -hmm. so the last person I borrowed or had lent books to was her. So like I think <laughs> it all eventually go to one library. So all good. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. fine. That doesn't count. <laughs> yeah, I guess that doesn't count. Same, yeah. yeah, but I've been burned by by losing how Allen Ginsberg. So. Anymore. Yeah, it's not yeah. very nice, isn't it? Yeah. I know. You turn it to me. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Look at the set. Look at the set, Sushin. My favorite poem. Okay. <laughs> now, um, okay, last question. This will be the last, last. Um, can you give us some book recommendations? Like maybe Ooh. three books? Any books? Three? It could be Cosmos. I can, oh my God. <laughs> Cosmos by Carl Sagan. Yeah, Cosmos by Carl Sagan, definitely. Mm -hmm. I attribute my own intellectual development to that book. Ah. So I hope it does the same for you. Uh, Cosmos okay. by Carl Sagan. Cosmo? uh, Cosmos. Cosmos. Uh, Cosmos. Cosmos. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, I love <laughs> Unseen Academical uh, Unseen Academicals by Terry Pratchett. Okay. So it follows the story of the Unseen University, which is a medical university, right. uh, forming right. their first football team. Ah. So that librarian, who's an ape, who's an, sorry, who's an orangutan, plays keeper. And it's fantastic. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I'm a football fan myself, so oh, I think right. to see my two favorite walls, like football and Terry Precious, this wall just combined together, oh, okay. my dream come true. Um, mm -hmm. I uh, mm, let's see a third book. I have so many books to recommend. Uh, well, yes, my book. <laughs> mm, mm, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, oh, tough let's choose one. Uh. <laughs> Uh, oh, there's so many that I want to. They want to. You can recommend more than that. Okay. Uh, definitely. Okay. So I'm a Star Wars fan as well. Uh huh. The so for Star Wars, um, they have a lot of books that spin off from the movies. Yes. Exploring yep. different characters. Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorite is Admiral Tron from the Clone Wars series. Okay. Um, Admiral Tron's a blue skin alien who is a master tactician for the Empire okay. uh, and the First Order. Oh. So um, so he's like he's like your alien Sun Tzu, I guess, so to speak. Uh, uh, and it's a fantastic... And, and he comes from the Unknown Regions as well. Oh. So it's a fantastic exploration of uh, a man 
an evil man, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, learning where he came from, okay. and how um, and how his displacement makes him a fantastic military tactician. I know it's Star Wars, and mm -hmm. like you don't expect a, a military story of this depth coming from the Star Wars universe mm -hmm. because it's all you know space wizards and lightsaber duels. But yeah. but there are spin-off stories that are fantastic. Tron is one of my favorite characters right. because he's so fully fleshed, uh, despite being an alien from the unknown regions mm -hmm. in a galaxy far, far away. Uh -huh. You know, um, love the book. Okay. Um, if you were to ask me for non-geeky recommendation, <laughs> <Okay. laughs> uh, a non-geeky recommendation yes. mm -hmm. by a local, uh, by an author within the region, mm -hmm. um, I, I recently read um, uh, Altered Straits by Kevin Wong. Kevin Wong. Uh, okay. He's Singaporean, but yes. um, it's oh, that's also sci-fi. So that's a geek book as well. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, okay, yeah, but but those so, are the books. Yeah, so yeah. there you go. We've got we've got book recommendations. <laughs> so, so if you have you know still don't know uh, what to add, what uh, what to read next year. Yeah. If you have more than <laughs> three, you can come ask me. <laughs> Draw the question at books and bombs and I'll yes, I reply I'll, on Facebook or something. <laughs> if you like a very a, long list, know, <laughs> a, a long uh, list of uh, geeky books. Yeah. You know, then um, we can ask Sufian. I can think of non geeky books as well. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, I, I can, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, I will. So, yes. Um, ooh, ooh, 11 minutes by, by Paulo Coelho. Oh, my God. I love that. <laughs> oh, my God. That in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Love that book. Uh, uh, um, it's, it follows the story of a Brazilian girl who wanted to be... Uh, do you, have you read it? No. Brazilian girl wanted to be a dancer. Okay. Uh, but got hired by a club that offers extra services. Oh. So uh, she had, of course had to become an escort and everything. Okay. Um, and through all this, through having to, um, you know, uh, through having to service her clients, uh -huh. uh, she finds love um, in an oh, artist. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and it's a fantastic, fantastic story in studying how men and women approach love differently. Okay. Um, and how uh, they eventually work towards a middle ground in, uh, in finding what uh, love is in common, uh, what, okay. how they view love common, you know, in common. So, uh, okay. it's, love it. Oh, okay. Okay, Eleven sorry. Minutes. Okay, that, that's yep. going to my TBR. Yes. <laughs> okay, and will be number 579. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, that's how many I have. So, yeah. um, we had a great time chatting with Sufian today. I had a great Thank time you as well. very much. Thank you so much and for having really me. I'm really honored to, you know, uh, that, that you would uh, have this conversation it's my pleasure. with us today. It's my pleasure. And um, we wish Sufian all the best with your next book. Thank you. And, uh, you know, let us know and uh, maybe arrange for another one yes. of this conversation again. Yes. Okay. okay Thank definitely. you very much. Thank you for having me. All the best. Thank you so much. Oh, and congratulations to your engagement. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, yes. That's yeah. It. Okay. Yes. Can we cut? Can we cut? Is it a wrap? Yes. Get your copy of Harry's Report and the Stone Philosopher at. Oh, Woo!